Hi, my name is Stephen McGee and I'm the author of Solar Radiation, Global Warming and Human Disease. And we're going to talk about one of the subjects that's in that book and that is the police. And unfortunately I was traveling through New Mexico near Silver City and Bayard and I came across a police officer who pulled me over and I wasn't breaking the law and ticketed me with a speeding ticket. I thought it was very suspicious as for about the half an hour preceding, I'd actually been photographing the largest copper mine in the USA. I was just a tourist passing through the area and uh, it's just a very impressive sight. I was taking photographs of it for just personal reasons, had no real interest in the mine. And uh, I suspected that this stop was fraudulent because the officer approached me from the opposite direction and then he did a U-turn and shortly after doing that U-turn he pulled me over and when he told me I was speeding I thought it was quite suspicious because I actually had a GPS unit that gave me the speed that I was doing and I was watching it the whole time the police officer was behind me so I kind of knew something was up when he was telling me that I was doing 60 because I knew I wasn't doing 60 so uh, needless to say I decided to go to court regarding this charge and uh, it's actually been dismissed so the interesting thing is I got charged with this in 2012 and at the end of 2012 the six-month trial rule kicked in and that's what this document is so in New Mexico they have a six-month trial rule that if they don't bring it to trial within six months of the allegation being made then they have to dismiss it so needless to say the case got dismissed on that rule so I was found not guilty in this offence. So this brings me to what this video is about and this video is about the evidence submission that I was going to present to New Mexico State Police in the trial and I didn't actually get a chance to present it and that kind of annoyed me in a sense because I spent a lot of time putting this defense together and as such I'm going to show you the information that I was in the process of submitting to New Mexico State Police so that if you ever go up against New Mexico State Police or any other police department in the USA for that matter that you can see what kind of stuff you should be submitting to them to demonstrate that you are not guilty. So the first thing that you should submit to them is what you were given at the citation and I want to bring your attention to this little section here it says 60 miles per hour in a 55 zone it's very very clear there's no mistaking that says 55 so that's what I got at the scene and this is what the court got given so this is what the court has on file. So for some reason the officer decided he was going to increase the level of the offence and he was going to say that it was a 45 zone even though he knew it was a 55 zone. So I found that very concerning particularly given that you know the stop appeared to be fraudulent as did the ticket that I was given and this appears to be a fraudulent document that the court was submitted. So he was, I actually went to the motions hearing and he was still insisting it was a 45 zone even though he was shown that it was actually a 55 zone at the scene. And I also showed him in court the actual speed limit signs. So I've actually been to court over this. I got to the motions hearing and I actually showed him the speed limit signs for the area and he's still denying that it was a 45 zone. So he, he denies that it's it's not the it's not signposted at 55 but it actually is signposted at 55 because I photographed the sign this is a photograph I took at the time that I was stopped I after the police officer left I went back and photographed the actual speed limit sign and this is it so there's no doubt that it's a 55 mile an hour zone so it concerned me that the police officer was going into court and saying it was 45 and here's the actual sign and there's the road so this is where I encountered the police officer shortly after passing the sign. He came around the bend in the opposite direction. So we were well past the sign at that point. 
So we were definitely in a 55 mile an hour zone, right there, 55. So even my GPS, this is a photograph of the screen of my GPS. Even my GPS was saying it was a 55 zone. I actually showed the officer this during the stop. So it's very clearly a 55 mile an hour zone. So one of the things that you want to submit to the court is an aerial map of where the encounter took place. And this is it. And you can see that the road is actually bendy. And the very interesting thing about bends in roads is that radar systems don't work around bends, particularly in rush hour traffic when the stop occurred. So they give a lot of errors on bends. And you know, no officer should be submitting radar readings on a road like this to a court. I mean, it's just fraudulent to be submitting radar readings on a bendy road. And here's the, the actual bend in the road. So you can see that the road's filled with curves. And you see there's that little metal sign at the side of the roads. You see that right there. Metal signs cause interference with radar systems and they actually cause the radar system to get jammed. So you want to be submitting photographs like this to the court to demonstrate that it's likely that the radar system wasn't working properly. And on that theme, you can actually see that again we've got a little sign at the side of the road, but we also have a power pole. And that power pole, the lines are actually crossing the road and they interact with the radar system and throw off the accuracy of the radar system. So you want to submit photographs of this kind of stuff to the court. And regarding power lines, I did actually test the power lines and I sent the utility company in the area a copy of the results that I got off those power lines and requested that they go down there and understand the emissions coming off the power lines because there was extensive electromagnetic radiation coming off the power lines in that area that could interfere with the police radar system. So it's likely that the radar system was heavily interfered with. And when you review the police officer's video, which I actually have from his car, and I should mention that the, well, the police officer actually supplied me with was a truncated video. The only thing that that video showed was my car at the side of the road. It showed nothing else. It didn't show any evidence of any offense, didn't show any evidence of any speeding. All it showed was the police officer giving me the citation at the side of the road. So for some reason, New Mexico State Police didn't video the actual incident that they were accusing me of. And I can only wonder why a police, a police car that is equipped with video was not turned on during the incident. And perhaps it was turned on. Perhaps they withheld that information. And I suspect had the video been supplied in full of the full incident, then there would have been no case. So I have concerns at the fact that I was supplied with a truncated video by New Mexico police. And I, I actually believe that truncated videos that don't show the entire encounter are actually illegal for court submission. So you should investigate that. Uh, it's just a rumor I've heard while I was putting my evidence together. And I wasn't gonna pursue trying to get that video banned from use in the court because it actually worked in my favor. So I was actually going to let the police officer submit that video. And then I was going to query some things that were in that video because it showed some very interesting stuff going on, particularly regarding the police officer's behavior. So the next thing is, again, street signs. So there's another street sign at the side of the road. This, this road was actually littered with metal street signs. And the radar system is not accurate in that kind of environment, it states so in the manual. And you're actually entitled to a copy of the radar manual. So if you go up against the police, you should make sure that you request through the motion for discovery process, the police radar manual and all its calibration certificates. So this is another thing that you should pay attention to is the metal guardrails. Those metal guardrails cause radar reflections and they throw off the accuracy of the unit. So if there's metal 
guardrails along the route, you should make sure that you submit photographs of them to the court for your defence because they jam the radar. So the other thing that can jam radars is antenna systems in the area. So you want to do a search of the area and as you can see there's 30 antenna locations around this area and if they're broadcasting similar frequencies to what the radar system is using then they're, they're going to start doing weird stuff to the radar system. So you can submit a document like this and just say that the antenna systems were jamming the radar system. The other thing you should submit is a video of the route and this video that I submitted to New Mexico State Police shows the speed limit sign that it's clearly posted at 55 and it shows the entire route that the incident occurred on and you can actually watch this on my YouTube channel so that video is available for view and it clearly shows that the route was actually signposted at 55 miles per hour. So this is another thing that I submitted to the court which is radar frequency bands. So radar can operate in a wide range of frequencies and some of them are very high and I believe that this radar unit was operating in the K range. It's very high frequency radiation. So you want to include that just to demonstrate that you understand how radar is working and the frequencies that it's using because you want to demonstrate competence to the judge. And if you have any qualifications then you may want to include them. I'm actually an electrical engineer. I'm actually a chartered electrical engineer and I have a honours degree in electrical and electronic engineering so I also submitted those certificates to the court to demonstrate my competence in the field of electronic systems of which radar is one of those systems. And talking about electronic systems, they, they affect people's behaviours. They, they do a lot of weird things to the human body and this is all very, very well understood today. And uh, given that the officer was displaying some strange behaviours, uh, I submitted this document to support my observations of the officer's behaviours and it very clearly states that people who are exposed to these frequencies have behavioural changes. So I submitted that to say that, you know, well, the radar system and all those electronic systems in the car and all the electromagnetic interference that was around in that area, well, it probably was affecting him. So, naturally, if you're incurring expenses, you want to submit your bills to the court and pursue costs. It's unlikely that you're going to get them, but you should put them in and demonstrate that you've actually had financial hardship. And if you can demonstrate any evidence of financial hardship, you should do so. So, the other thing I found is that apparently there's some, so, some stuff going on in Silver City. So, they've already had problems with some of the police officers. And this is an article that demonstrates that one of them was actually uh, arrested for being intoxicated. So, you want to demonstrate that there's some strange stuff going on in the police department to undermine their ability to prosecute you. And this is also an interesting thing that I found. It's a corruption risk report card. So I was going to submit this. It apparently says that New Mexico is 39th out of 50 states for being corrupt. So it has a D minus grade. So uh, it gets very poor reviews. So it's, it's towards the bottom of ethical states from what I can gather. So you obviously want to demonstrate to the judge, you know, one of the things that you've got to do in a radar case is demonstrate that you know what you're talking about. And you should kind of consider it as an education because you need to educate the people in the public gallery. You also need to educate the judge that these systems are not very reliable and they're not very accurate and the environmental conditions have to be met for them to give an accurate reading and if they don't meet the environmental conditions then you know the reading is useless. So this was an article that I was going to submit to them. It's all about radar guns so that was going to be my education to them about radar and then I was going to start talking about things that can affect 
radar system. So it's going to submit this article to Electronic Countermeasures that shows that electronic systems can actually jam radar systems. And the police car is filled with electronic systems, it's filled with computers, it's filled with wireless communications, it's filled with radios, uh, they have electronic weaponry. So the police officer probably has a cell phone. So, you know, there's a bunch of very weird stuff going on inside a police car. And the car itself gives off electromagnetic radiation. And then it's around power lines and it's around antenna systems. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that can interfere with the radar system. So you want to talk about that in court. And you've got to remember that the, the thing that you're trying to do in court is to demonstrate that the police officer didn't get an accurate reading. So you want to talk about radar jamming and deception. And it's very easy to jam a radar system. You, you don't really have to do too much to get, make them give errors. And uh, one of the things that they're affected by is dust, and particularly metallic dust. So if you can demonstrate that there was metallic dust in the area, which there was, where this reading took place, because we were outside the largest copper mine in the USA. So the whole area would have been filled with conductive dust. So there's no doubts that that would have been interacting with the radar system and jamming it. And what jamming really means is it just means that the radar system loses accuracy. So the accuracy goes off and it's no longer certified to be accurate and it's no longer certified for admission to the court. So this officer had, in my opinion, a radar system that was giving him bad readings and that was actually jammed. And along that line, you want to kind of submit this document. It's an FCC document that talks about interference defining the source. And one of the things that you'll see, it talks about transmitter interference. So it's kind of like all the transmitters in the area, including what's on the police car. Uh, electrical interference, that's the power lines that's in the area and all the electrical equipment that's in the area. And the environment is, is on radiation overload right now. So there's... With this rapid adoption of wireless devices, there's a ton of stuff that can cause interference on these radar systems. You want to point that out to the judge. This is an article that I found on mining dust. Uh, it basically says that mining dust goes all over the place. So, like me, if you're getting a speeding ticket in front of a mine, you should include an article like this that says the, the dust from mines can interfere with it and uh, it goes long, long distance from the mine. It's not contained to the mine. It goes all over the place. And it was a copper mine, so it would have been filled with copper particles. And copper particles jam radar systems. So there's no doubts that the area was filled with copper mining dust. The other thing the area was filled with was electrical energy. And I found this document and it talks about the electrical energy that's in the area. So I submitted it as part of my evidence submission. And it has a very, very high amount of electrical energy around this particular mine. So I was going to say that that was interfering with the radar system also. So it turned out that this radar system is old. And I'm not too sure how old it was because the police officer declined through the motion for discovery process to tell me exactly how old this radar system was. But this is an interesting little graph. It's actually used in the electronics industry. What this graph, it's actually called the bathtub curve. And what this graph actually shows is that when systems are new, they fail rapidly. Then that failure levels off to a very low level. Now as they get old, the failure rate goes up rapidly. So, given that this unit was in phase three of the electronics reliability curve, it was actually probably quite unreliable. And the officer could not furnish any evidence that the unit was actually maintained other than a set of very old calibration certificates. So, uh, he couldn't tell me the mileage of the unit, he couldn't tell me whether the unit had been in any, any crashes, he couldn't tell me how many cars it had been in. And uh, I was a little bit concerned that there didn't appear to be any maintenance history for this particular device. And I was very concerned that the, the judge wouldn't make the officer produce that history. So uh, there's quite a few things that the judge wouldn't let me see through the motion for a discovery process. And uh, I actually thought that the 
the whole court case that I had with them at the motions hearing seemed to be centered around them withholding information that was actually entitled to have from me. So that was another concerning aspect that I had with New Mexico State Police. So this is a document about electronic reliability prediction. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes wrong with electronics as they age. Uh, it's all very, very well known. And this was a document that I was going to submit. And I was going to talk about how electronics fails and the failure modes and how some electronics can give the impression that they're actually working when they're not. And the types of things that can affect them. So this was a document that talks about all that kind of stuff. So you kind of want to demonstrate that, given that the unit was old, that it was probably getting affected by aging effects that occur in electronic systems and probably was not guaranteed to be reliable. So I was actually going to submit more evidence and the reason why I didn't is because they dropped the charges. So uh, there was no more research to do on this. But when it comes to going up against the police in radar readings, technology is actually on your side. And there's a whole bunch of information around that you can actually demonstrate that these units are not reliable, that they have to be used in a set variety of environmental conditions for them to give accurate readings. And if those environmental conditions are not met, then the officer doesn't really have a case against you. And the other thing that you should submit is case history. If you can find any case history that works in your favor, submit it to the judge. And uh, you may actually find that when it all comes down to going to trial and you go to trial and you have all this information that the judge will simply side with you because it's basically impossible for him not to. So that's defending yourself against a radar speeding ticket. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and I wish you the very best of health. Thank you.